I'm your biggest evangelist. Um, I adore math, and I, yes, uh, agree that there is a marketing problem. I know the, the woman yesterday back there said, you know, how do we market math? And um, to the extent that my book, uh, the publisher said, do not use the term math in the title, gives you an idea. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I just have a few ideas that um, I've sketched out. I mean, I think to the extent that you need to evangelize, you need to attract people not like me, not students like me who loved it all already, but people who claim not to have any interest in math, but you can sort of bury the pill in the apple by maybe instead of having the subjects, and this is obviously a pipe dream, but never, instead of having the, the subjects be uh, you know, polynomials and then conic sections and whatnot, but maybe have something like, the, you, you look at the sections of a newspaper, okay? You have the math of business. You have the math, you know, where you, fine, you do compound interest, great or you know, what, whatever it may be. The math involved in um, law. You have the, you know, the prosecutor's fallacy, DNA testing. You can deal, you know, we all know how we can exploit those subjects to teach math. So if somebody's interested in law, not math, well, they'll sort of see what it is we're talking about. And there are all sorts of, you know, the math of art, whether you want to look at the golden section, okay? Uh, depending on where you sit on that argument. Um, you know, or perspective. You have the math of weather. What does 70% chance of rain mean? How do you predict the cone of the hurricane? Math involved in the environment, in advertising. You know, when Perrier says that, they're, that it's pu you know, they're, their water is pure, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, medicine, okay, or science, how do, you know, when you say that, what does it mean to prove that something is effective? Because it's not the same as proving that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. There are different standards. So I just think, you know, the math of interior design and tessellation, I think that if we, like I said, bury the math pill in various apples, it might go down a lot easier to the people who would otherwise think they're gonna hate it. I'm standing there talking to the commissioner of the National Football League, basically dumping at his feet a problem that I knew in my bones was going to be immense for him. And in a way, I was becoming the math teacher that I had always planned on being. All I wanted to do was get him to understand the probabilities at work here, that it wasn't just me being a pain in the ass. It was the fact that when you're four out of four for a million to one shot, something's up. They also use probabilistic arguments to try to explain how prevalent it is. Here is one that's been used for decades. Okay, about 5% of school-aged children have ADHD, so that's one in every classroom, at least one in every classroom. Oh. Okay, that sounds reasonable if the classroom is about 25 kids and 5%, and so yeah, there's at least one in every classroom. But the thing is, is if they're randomly distributed, there might be more than one in some classrooms and none in others, and it's a very basic probability question where if the prevalence is 5% and the classroom size is 25, okay, the probability of a diagnosis is one out of 20, there are 25 trials, but the probability that there's one or more in a classroom is only 72% because a lot of them are going to have none. And so 28% of classrooms do not have a kid with ADHD. Now, that's not just a mathematical mistake. That means that if they make sure that every kid in a classroom has the diagnosis, that raises diagnosis rates 43%, like that. Me. Who here has heard of the Fibonacci? Sequence. Okay, cool. All right. What is it? Quick. Hi. I hate it when people called on me, so this is my revenge. <laughs> it's the same number, but just in a different, you're just starting from a different number. One, four, two, eight, five, seven, all the way through. I just thought that was kind of neat. Um, and so, it's just one of those goofy things.
tools, and we use the large pen. <laughs> Your tax dollars at work. Um, anyways, hey, so there is a spiral. Okay, a Nautilus shell next to a Fibonacci uh, rectangle. Or it's called the golden rectangle because of the golden ratio, the golden ratio. 1.618. So it's it's just cool. And I, I always thought that was wild because it showed that you know math has some applications beyond just multiplying and dividing. It, it actually comes up in a lot of areas. That's storm cloud, which presumably looks familiar. So that's another thing. Uh, a lot of seeds, okay? Nature wants to propagate the species, right? And so what they want to do is have as many seeds packed together as possible. And that's done using Fibonacci numbers. Okay, that pine cone has eight spirals going around it. This one has 13 because that allows more seeds to be packed in the area. The reason that notes sound good to us is because of their different ratios of the lengths of the string. And you certainly know how what a piano looks like. That's a logarithmic curve. Okay, because that's how music works. So I I really like numbers again because of how they affected art and affected things that we don't normally think of as being numbers, things that are sort of beyond numbers, but numbers are still very involved. And I was thinking like, gee, I wonder if something like popular music uses these ratios in the same way, because if it's pleasing visually, maybe it's pleasing oral as well. And even the Beatles used the golden ratio in their work. And so listen to this song. I, I had to know what the numbers were right. in order to know that A, what I was doing was correct. Exactly. Okay? And, and, and that B, I would have evidence. Okay? But no one wants to hear that the dementia rates in the NFL population are 13, 19 times that of a regular America. Like, that won't mean anything unless they have people to attach it to, unless they understand the effects of it, unless they can relate to what those numbers mean. Okay? I mean, it, people think of, of, of numbers as, as cold, and of course they can be, but they're very, very powerful. You know, what numbers, what numbers lack in, in, in personality, they more than make up for in clarity. In clarity. 